back at it, I decided I'm going to go a little bit further with this thing. Uh, here at my place in Janesville, Wisconsin. And I've got my little four and a half inch Milwaukee angle grinder here. This has a larger version of the Scotch Brite from Heck on here. This is a really coarse one. We're going to see what it does to the skillet with regards to the finish as it currently stands, having been hand sanded by, uh, I think I went up to 220 grit last night. So we'll see what this does. This is kind of loud. Bear with me. So here it is. I'm not sure how well the camera picks that up. Yeah, so that's pretty clear. So again, this is the coarse uh, Scotch Brite pad or stripping pad. I didn't touch the walls, I just did the bottom of it. And this is the untouched area. So that's as it was sanded last night at like 220 grit. And this is, I'm quite astonished at how fine this is. Um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. It leaves scratch marks in there. I don't know how well this picks that up, uh, but I have the option of, I've got finer ones on here. Uh, I've got these blue ones which are uh, much finer, and then uh, I guess the middle ground would be these which are the quote-unquote medium. Um, so I think at the end of the day, between just using these, I don't even have to do hand sanding. Um, these will probably just leave a fantastic finish as is. So I'm going to keep going here. So here we are. This is how I'm leaving it with the angle grinder. Um, I only went up to the medium grit abrasive disc here um, using the fine one uh, perhaps because mine's old and burned up and I think I'd already wasted the other one he's coming two packs um, so because this is burned up and the abrasive at the edge or the periphery of it is compromised it kept leaving like burning marks every time I would touch it onto the cast iron. Once I got going in a particular area, it seemed to be okay, but every time I took the tool away and put it, you know, reapplied it to the cast iron, it left this, you know, this burn mark or a scuff mark or something like that. And so I decided I'm probably going to just go back to the medium one here, and I'm really happy with how that turned out. So here it is. Yeah, there's some swirl marks from the angle grinder. I'm frankly undecided as to whether or not I care about that. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and season it as is. I'm going to wash it obviously with dish soap and water a couple times to make sure I get all the metal grit out of it before I begin seasoning it. And that's kind of a kind of a uh, tense moment there because when you clean this cast iron, I mean, right now it's 
you know, not that big of a deal. But when you once you start introducing water into the picture, it'll just rust right before your eyes. Uh, so we want to avoid that. So here's the finished product. I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. Lighting's kind of not the best. Um, looking at the walls and at the bottom of the skillet, it's uh, quite uniform and the seasoning application here. I'm really glad of that. I wasn't sure how well it would turn out given the stovetop method that I employed. I wasn't sure how well the walls of the skillet would heat up in relation to the bottom. Uh, but it did really well. I cannot give you a quantitative amount of applications of oil. All I can say is that for about 25 minutes I cycled the heat on and off on this thing in order to help it to heat soak, as I, that's a blacksmithing term. Um, you kind of let the high spots equilibrate with the low temp spots of the skillet so the whole thing more so reaches a uniform temperature across the whole surface. Uh, so I was seasoning it with virgin flaxseed oil applied to paper towel that was folded up a whole lot. Um, it's pretty imperative to have two oven mitts here, one's holding onto the handle and the other one is vigorously applying flaxseed oil. Uh, the principle is you heat the skillet up. Uh, before you heat it up you apply a very very thin layer of flaxseed oil to the skillet you buff it on there. If you can see the oil you have too much oil on there that's a real simple way to look at it. Um, and you heat it up until you start seeing lots and lots of smoke coming off. And when you don't see smoke coming off anymore, then the volatile compounds of that oil have burned off or been cooked off, and therefore it's time to apply some more oil. And so I essentially followed that process for about 25 minutes. And uh, yeah, this is how it turned out. I'm pretty happy with it. There's two areas. One here. Not sure how well that's showing up. Probably not very well at all. This is a really old camera, but it's the best I got for now. Uh, and then there's another spot over here. Uh, actually three spots. There's one here too, where I kind of let the oil, I wasn't paying attention, and uh, it got a little bit thick there. So the result of that is some um, tiny black splotches on there, or spots like freckles. From a practicality standpoint, I don't know that it's really going to matter, especially as time goes on and I use this thing. Um, you know, the, the seasoning is going to build up and it should all level out and be perfectly fine at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it should be far superior to any um, fresh out of the foundry lodge cookware that, uh, that you can get. Uh, I'm not trying to bash Lodge here, don't, don't look at it that way. I really love Lodge. I've got a whole lot of their goodies throughout my kitchen. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, they, they cut costs and they started selling skillets that were just bead blasted out of the factory. And, I mean, yeah, I cook stuff on it. It works, but can it be better? Yeah, it can be better. Uh, and it takes a lot of labor to be better. And that's something that I'm certainly willing to invest here and that's totally up to you whether or not you want to just leave your skillet as is and cook with that rough cast uh, texture or if you would like to see an improvement uh, then you can go ahead and follow the procedure that I've kind of outlined here and feel free to ask any questions and you know I hope I'm, I uh, was clear on how to sand down and clean up and Reseason a skillet, but uh, yeah, it's my first time doing a YouTube video, and particularly a series here. This is a this will be effectively part eight, uh, but since it's seasoning, I I'm separating this from the other series of cast iron skillet restoration videos. The others were mainly focusing on the nitty gritty of getting the old crap off, and uh, here we are putting the new seasoning on. So. Thank you all for watching, I really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, of course, in the tradition of YouTube, please like this video, and subscribe, and, and share it with your friends, 
if you feel it is worthy of doing so. Take care.